Hey guys, Stealthy here, and welcome back to From the Depths, where today we're going to make this boat a bit smarter than it is right now. We're going to install an AI system, we're going to make sure that this thing has the capacity to actually detect targets on its own, and engage targets on its own. For that, I'm going to use a mainframe, of course. I'm going to have the forward torpedo battery only geared toward firing at surface targets. And, of course, uh, since one of my start recording, stop recording keys is directly tied to firing weapons, we are just sending out a whole salvo of torpedoes. Now, starting with the torpedoes, I believe that I made a mistake here. Uh, yep, I have two one-turns. That is a bit much. I don't really need two one-turns. Let's see, I could have... Let's have a regulator over there. Keep that one turn, and then I can switch this regulator into an explosive warhead. Apply. We're going to save that as the torpedo. And with that done, apply all, and we're done. Good. Now, let's make sure that there are no surface contacts nearby that could pose a threat. There are some in a northern direction. This... Whoa. Bloody hell, that's some firepower right there. I love the effects, by the way. Do that again. Boom! Look at that. Now, um, it looks like they are properly messing each other up. <coughs> uh, the messing bit being done by the target on the left. So, I think that it's safe enough for me to not have to worry about that. So, what we're going to do is set up a command system. And I do have some room for it over here albeit not terribly much, but it's going to have to do. So, AI mainframe. I'm going to have a couple of uh, connectors over here. Normally I park my mainframe in the middle of the boat, but this is just not really handy at the moment. Of course, this is not anywhere near the final shape of the boat. That's fine. It's a, it's a growing project. Let's go with the local weapons controller here. Uh, set it to a minimum engagement range of, I'd say, somewhere in the range of 250 before those things actually make it to the surface. Maximum range, um, I'd say four and a half. I haven't actually tested the maximum range on these things, so I don't know exactly what they can do. Maximum altitude to engage, um, I think two meters should do it, and yeah, that should do. All right, let's make sure that this thing has a receiver on it so that it can direct or it can get directions from the main controller. This is uh, the uh, main CPU. CPU, there we go. Every time I press control, this thing starts firing. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Because right now it's not detecting anything. It's blind, it's deaf, it's just a computer doing much of nothing. Now, since I have this con tower over here, I might as well use that. So let's go with a couple of connectors. Um, and I think I need to make the sonar stick out a bit. Detection equipment, passive sonar 360, and for a receiver. Alright, it's receiving on channel 1. Where's my CPU? Come on. Here you are. It's tracking... Nothing? I think we're going to have to feed this thing a bit more power. Card slots. I'm going to add a few general processing cards to make sure that this thing actually has enough processing power available. And yes, I don't really need to use the card slots for that, but whatever. How many targets are you tracking? None. Okay, auto adjust. Still none. I'm also going to set up another sonar system. This might be a bit much, by the way. Uh, local, there we go, wireless receiver, like that. And we're going to close off this section again. Alright, so now we have passive sonar. I also want to have active sonar. And we can actually perfectly park that on the bow of the boat. 
For some reason this thing already starts to fire, although I'm not exactly sure if it has anything that it's actively tracking. I don't believe so. Let's see. Uh, detection equipment, active sonar. We could make it a 90. 90 degree field of vision, so it's going to detect um, only direction front. Like that. Nope, not like that. Come on, here you go. <coughs> Is active. It's not tracking any targets. We keep firing torpedoes at something. Aha! There's something pretty close here. Which, judging by the shape of its hull, has already taken quite a beating from the torpedoes. And I'm... I don't like that at all. Fortunately it doesn't have the range, or it doesn't have the firepower to get close, whereas my torpedoes actively do. But it is returning fire. Yep, 204,000 damage already. So what's going on with the tracker? Are we actively working on something? Nothing on passive. Um, active sonar like this doesn't actively see it. Uh, let's see. We could add another sonar array. Uh, wire, local, no, not local. Detection, sonar 360. It's tracking two targets. But we don't have enough processing power available anymore. So we're going to have to add a few more of those general purpose cards. And also, something else that I want to have is a card that's going to allow... No. A card that's going to allow me target prioritization. Sure, add it the wrong way around. There we go. And the other one is the aimpoint selector. I'm not exactly sure how well my torpedoes are going to work with that. But let's hope it's well enough. What are you working on? This thing cannot detect backwards, this thing cannot detect forwards, but we're still tracking targets. And it looks like we have done a very hefty blow to the target on the north. Actually, here it is, yeah. Damage keeps going up. Not so much so that the thing cannot fire, mind you. That is not the case. It is definitely very much capable of fighting back against targets that are currently circling it, like that one. I think it's a uh, aerial craft. Not likely to be targetable... Yeah, it's flying right overhead. It's not likely to be targetable by my missiles or my torpedoes currently. So we're going to have to come up with a different weapon system in order to deal with that thing. Right. Actually, I'm already farming new resources. I'm richer than I was at the start of the episode. So I'd call that a win. Now, something else that I want to have is a detector for surface contacts. Whoops, so much for the sonar. Um, we're going to need the active sonar. And I want to have a detector system over here. <coughs> so that's going to be a controller a launch pad. What do you mean it's not connected? There, now you're connected. And a gantry. This thing is only going to have... Where is it? A sonar buoy. Sorry, a radar buoy. Floating on the surface. And it's going to have... Where is it? A ballast tank. Set to maximum buoyancy. It's going to keep launching these things. And we're going to make sure that it does that by automatically setting up a control block that's only going to have an effective range of, I believe, two blocks should do it. Um, activate on spawning. The weapon system next to it, fire weapons, effect delay, I'd say about... 20 seconds should do it. 
Might be it might be too much. These things can live for about one no sorry, sixty seconds. Test it. Didn't work. Again, didn't work. Why is it not working? What am I missing? Is it set up the wrong direction? Is that it? I never use these things, so I'm a bit rusty as far as that's concerned. Um, activate input every uh, 50 seconds. Weapon system, fire weapons, effect range, two meters or two blocks. Test. Nope. Come on, guys, what am I missing here? Help me out. What am I not seeing? Does it need to be set up with a 4 meter range? Is that it? Or is it because I don't have the necessary system on my AI yet? I don't think that should matter too much, but let's assume that that is the problem. Detection equipment, uh, radar buoy holder. Hang on, holds one radar buoy for attaching. Uh, um, yeah, fire one radar buoy. Waiting to be deployed. Ah, there we go. Now it's getting deployed. Perfect. So, can we now see if it's tracking anything? Yeah, it's tracking one target. It's detecting the stalwart with a detection chance of 16%. Now let's use the build mode to go to the surface. Let's see if we can find our little buoy. Which should be flopping around on the surface. Hello? Yep, there it is. That's my radar buoy. Now I can... <laughs> now I can detect stuff above the surface. Uh, so aerial contacts cannot be detected by the ship. Um... Ah, there we go. It's now leveling out. Good. These things will disappear after about 50 seconds, 60 seconds. And after those 60 seconds are up, it should launch another one automatically. So we now have the capability of detecting stuff above water. Good. Let's make sure it's set to uh, 2. How long do you need? Yep, it's still deployed. Okay, so that's done. Now I could use sonar buoys, but I don't think I particularly need those. Unless, yes, that's a bit safer actually. Unless we make it so that the sonar buoy, which is I believe an active buoy, is going to be tracking stuff so that my active sonar doesn't have to. And the less signals I send out, the better it'll be for me. Um, let's build another missile setup. So it's going to be a controller. It's going to be a launch pad. A launch pad. Come on. I have to adjust my controller system again. There we go. Gantry. And the ACB should work both ways. So that's done. Now we need to make sure that this thing is set up properly. I want to have a ballast tank so that it's floating neutral at my depth. And then I want to have a sonar buoy. That should do it. Let's test it. Yep, it's floating off. So now we have a sonar buoy. And the sonar buoy is tracking one target. Detection chance 12%. I, however, do not have enough detection or processing power. So we're going to have to get a bit more processing power into this thing. And again, this is <laughs> not in any way the most efficient way of building a mainframe. But at least it's capable of fitting in the boat for now. Let's see, mainframe, what do we have? 14 is processing power, uh, which needs 7 power in total, so we're running at full capacity. Good. There's my sonar buoy, still floating behind me. And right now I'm not actively giving out any signals. 
at least uh, not as far as I know at the moment. Not wood blocks, come on. Metal blocks. Two meter block there, one meter block there, good. So now we have the, yep, there's the radar beacon flopping off to the surface and there's the sonar buoy. Let's see if they're actively tracking something. Because we keep firing missiles at everything that's close. Yep. This one. This one. This one. The radar buoy is not tracking anything. The sonar buoy is tracking one thing, a stalwart. The radar buoy may still have to... Yep, now it's sort of tracking targets. Okay. So what is going on around us? Is that still the stalwart? That one lonely survivor? No, that's something else. That is not the boat that we were targeting earlier. This is something else. Well, whatever's left of it. Which, currently, is not too much. That thing really took a beating. And it's about to take another one. Already a second set of torpedoes is on the way. Okay, so now I can basically, um, if I really wanted to, walk away from the computer and it's going to automatically engage new targets. It will, however, not move automatically, other than the direction I already set up for it. So, it's not actively maneuvering along the ocean, and that's something that I generally don't need. At least not in adventure mode when I'm just controlling one craft. So I can just control it manually, and have the weapon systems fire automatically. I think that the next order of business should be to install an anti-air battery. Could be missiles, could be a gun. Um, I usually prefer missiles because they tend to work a little bit better for me, but as some of you have pointed out, in the future I will probably need a gun system, because missiles can be dodged, or can be defeated using, for example, flares or anti-missile systems. So that is something that I will have to take into account. For now though, I think I can get away with just getting another set of missile launchers, this time around going for aerial targets. The question is, where the hell are we going to fit those? Because my torpedo bays are pretty full. Oh, actually, I still have active sonar here. That's not good. Um, don't want to send out any signals. Although, I'll probably get detected anyways. Let's see, detection ranges. Um, this is heat. 300 meters-ish. Next is... What are we looking at? Radar range. Well, radar doesn't work underwater. Current sonar range. I guess we're not capable of getting detected on sonar? That's bullshit. Oh, sorry, I'm viewing radar. Now I'm viewing sonar. I can de be detected from the bow at 370 meter range, sideways on 900 meters, and stern 356. Okay. And this is wireless snooping range, 197 meters. That's, of course, a circle. Um, so, my sonar detection range is 900 meters-ish. That's not bad. I think that if I set up an active sonar, I'm going to be much, much more likely to get detected. How's that target? Is it dead yet? No, it's not dead yet. <clears throat> it's not looking too well. And at least it's no longer a threat. Okay. Now, back to the question at hand. Where the hell am I going to leave anti-surface missiles? Or, are we going to expand the boat uh, lengthwise and build a turret on the back? Yeah, let's experiment with that. Let's experiment with that a little bit. <laughs> this thing is getting pretty large at this point. I'm going to have to quickly do this, otherwise we're losing propulsion. This is going to be the section where I want to have my gun system installed. Alright, props away. Uh, 
our rudder away. And now we're going to close it off with a couple of 2 meter beams. And make sure we have uh, the rudder. There you are. And a couple of propellers. And this is a primary one, and that's a primary one. Alright, we're going to have to maneuver, or we're going to have to move the uh, hydrofoils back a little bit. No, too deep is enough. There. This section is currently flooded, cannot be controlled. So we're going to have an air pump in there. One's enough. It is a very shallow section for a gun. So I'm going to have to work on trying to fit something in here that's as efficient as possible. Uh, one access turret. Bloody hell, that's, that's gonna be cramped. Fortunately, I have the whole section to move around in, but it is still going to be pretty cramped. Especially with the gauge increasers. <laughs> that's gonna be interesting. Um, advanced firing piece. Oh, by the way, we're going to have to move those things back. First things first. Advanced cannons, mantlets. I want to have a 2 meter tall AA elevation unit. If I could fit that on properly, that would be wonderful. Not like that. There you go. Now, a submarine with a gun. Um... <laughs> It's still weird, as far as I'm concerned. It's still really weird. I'm going to go with a 4 meter barrel and another one. So it's time to take these things off, otherwise it's not going to be maneuvering properly. So back to the hull. This one off, that one off. We could fit those on the bottom of the boat where they're not going to be causing as much trouble. Roll reversal left hand. Okay, so now this turret can maneuver around as much as it would like. Right now it only has a 60 meter gauge, so we're going to have to do something about that. Um, I may have to move it forward a little bit, because I cannot install gauge increasers on this thing. At least, I don't believe so. Gauge units are always... Yeah, has to be added to the firing piece. I was afraid you were going to say that. Uh, oh, I don't like this much. This means I'm going to have to be maneuvering around with an open section of the boat. It's possible. It's not ideal. Fine. Uh, for now, this is what I'm going to go with. But I am sure that you guys have way better ideas on how to do this. How to make sure that this thing is enclosed. So, if you have any suggestions for me there, please let me know in the comments. Because I am rather inexperienced at building proper underwater guns. Uh, let alone fitting them into tight corners like this. Let's go with another gauge increase. Now we have 236 millimeter rounds. Split that in two, we have a hundred and... Well, we have a dual barrel 120 millimeter ish Give or take a few. We're going to have a cooling unit on here. And since we have the whole section, it should be able to just spin around merrily. Another one like that. Actually, no, I don't think that it would fit. Give me another splitter. Cooling unit. Another cooling unit. And a few more. Can it still spin? That's the question. Can it still spin around? Uh, oh, hang on. I don't need to only set up the turret, I also need to set up the... that one. Now, the problem is, <laughs> I have no way of knowing if that works. 
Oops. I think it does? I'm really not sure. Can we take off one of these sections and build a door? Uh, where was that again? Decorations, I think? Yep, standard door. I'm not sure how waterproof that thing is going to be. But here we are. Yep, it can spin around. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. I'm not sure if this thing is now going to count as a separate section, but I think it is. It's not breached. If I do it like that... It's still not breached. Huh. Okay. I'd say it's breached alright. Anyway, we have done 1.35 points... Sorry, 1.35 million damage. And we're actually doing quite well for resources here. Okay, so this thing can spin around as much as it would like. That's good. Um, hang on, I should... I'm considering rebuilding this thing. Okay, let's experiment a little bit. Take off the barrels. Take off the firing piece. If I can get another gauge increase on here... Or should it be a splitter? I want to have the firing piece on here. I'm not sure if that's possible. If it is, then I can have it uh, as one separate section. Shit. Why are you only a 60mm? Yeah, all of these things are no longer connected. Isn't that wonderful? Why, though, are you not connected? If I have the firing piece on here like this... Yep, so that works. Right, so a splitter should be able to do the trick, one would think. Not connected to the firing piece. Yeah, I imagine that. Nope. No. What the hell? Um. How does one do this? That's actually a genuine question, because I want to have my turret set up as one single block that's moving around without causing too much interference. So, maybe another gauge increaser. The more advanced of you are probably thinking, what the fuck are you doing? Don't worry, I'm asking myself the same thing. I should do this on stream, actually. That would probably be way easier. It's not connected to the firing piece. Shut up, why don't you? The problem is, I think... ...that it has to be connected to a separate piece. A different item on that. Rotate... Oh, come on. See, it has to be connected to the different, or a different section of the firing piece. Or the, um, this one, the splitter. Alright, screw it. That's not really going to work out. Um, unless you guys can feed me some sort of uh, smart way of fitting in this turret design, I'm going to be messy. So this is very, very much a temporary setup. Any way of uh, improving this design, I'm all for it. Anything you guys can suggest, let me know. And if you have to do that by uh, not typing it out, because I think that would be way more work than actually designing the thing, I would be very much appreciative. Gauge increasers. We can go this way. Splitter here. 
can then have another splitter. We can have some cooling units on here. I'm trying to make the most of the room that I have on this thing. I still have to add ammo, I know that. So your current dual barrel? No, your single barrel. Okay, well it's still the caliber that I want, 118 millimeters. Ah, uh, more cooling units. Now to check if it can still move. Check. looks like my... Oh, actually, I have something on the stern. And... What are you? Sorry about being so erratic about the building process, but I have to keep checking if there's something nearby. This, however, is an aerial contact, so it's getting ignored. Is there anything else here? No, I think that's the only one. Okay, so we're safe. Uh, turret design. We were going for an elevation... Mantlet, a two millimeter one. Sorry, two s two millimeter, two meter. Bloody hell, still! What the fuck are you doing? Okay, at the barrel. Barrels, plural. Now we're gonna have to add a few ammo uh, systems. So I'm going to say a probably 2 meter autoloader should do the trick. It's not a terribly large shell. So that should fit. Well, we could actually fit a 3 meter shell onto it. I'll probably still have it maneuver around. Ammo clip. Uh, we're going to go with the closed one. Should save a bit of FPS. Can it still maneuver? I'm sorry, I keep checking that because I have built plenty of turrets in the past that just refused to move around by the time that I was done with them. So far, it seems like, yes, they can still maneuver. can still move around quite happily. And now we can have a couple of ammo input feeders on here. One there. A couple there. Okay, and now we need to make sure that this thing actually gets ammo. So we're going to go with an ammo controller. A couple of customizers on there. We are dealing with, let's say, a front... Um, what does that need to be? Maybe Sabo rounds? So a Sabo head. We're looking at 118 millimeter rounds. Effective range, 2550 meters. That's if I only have gunpowder casings. Let's go with the super cavitation base. And for the shell middle, I want to have a couple more Sabo heads. So this thing is mostly for just blowing holes in shit. Uh, <laughs> that's a rather unelegant way of saying it, but that is really what we're going after. Um, AP 23.9. I think that is not too bad. We add another one. Oh, okay, so we do need a bit more gunpowder. Casing, gunpowder, rear, super cavitation base, 23.9. It's not going to do a terrible amount of damage, but I'm considering this one big experiment to see if it works. Now, speaking of if it works, let's start loading ammo. If I can still find the input systems, there we go. should now start loading ammo. Yep. Now we need to set up a firing computer for it. One thing that is going to be extremely important with this local com uh, firing computer or local up control is a failsafe. If this thing for some reason decides that it wants to engage when my boat's in the way, it's going to blow off parts of my boat. That is wholly unacceptable. So I'm going to say minimum range to engage, uh, 250. Maximum range, it's supposed to have a range of 5 clicks, so I don't think we need a max range. 
Minimum altitude to engage. Um, how about we go for 10 meters? Something like that. Maximum range or maximum altitude. No limit. Um, we're going to test fire this thing once. Before I hand it over to the computer. Oh, hang on. I forgot that this thing needs to be weapon system 2. Ready to fire. Gone away. Whoa! So one could argue that thing works. Are we going into space or something? Holy shit. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It works. It really bloody works. What's the rate of fire that we can muster with this gun? Firing. Reloading. Firing again. Well, it's not too bad. It's not a terribly high rate of fire. Again, I could really use your help on that one. Making sure that it's going to be more effective at firing at different targets. Let's go for a wireless receiver on this. And then hand it off. It seems that so far it's not too interested in going for targets just yet. Maybe because... Well, actually, there is something to shoot at. So why are you not finding anything? Does it know that there is a target nearby? Sonar's not tracking anything. Neither is missile radar, boys. So, according to the AI, there's nothing here. That could explain it. The one target that is out there... It's that little flying thingy. It's just simply too far away. We don't know it's there. Yeah, that explains it. Now let's see if we can sort of close off this section while still having the turret have uh, a degree of freedom. I think that we need to do it like this. Oh, I'm really not sure if that works. Again, let's check it. Nope, it no longer wants to move around. So we cannot have anything on these blocks, it seems. <coughs> now it wants to move around again. Right. What we can do is just build stuff onto the turret. Not sure if that closes it off per se, but it could be a start. A mm, couple of downward slopes. Hang on, I think we need a bigger one here. A four meter beam? Like that. I am so bad at designing turrets. Do not take any hints from me on building turrets. Seriously, if you want to have something that looks nice, there are plenty of channels who do a way better job at that than I do. So if you want to have a design for a turret, <laughs> look elsewhere. Right. That must be one of the ugliest things you've seen to date. It's a turret gem, but not as we know it. Now, let's hand it off to the AI, close the door, and let's see if we can find a target for it. But I'm afraid that the target that we can see currently, because we're heading south and the target seems to be heading north, is too far away. And it's going to take a while before we actually pick it up. Let's see, we are heading south. Let's... Oh. I never bothered to set up my rudder after I rebuilt it. Let's start making a course correction. Okay. 
coming west. Speed up. See what sort of speed we can still muster with this boat, because I think it's not going to be too much. Well, actually... 8.6 meters per second. I'm not even too unhappy about that. We are, however, starting to really tax the batteries. So we're going to have to consider adding another RTG. Otherwise, we might not have the necessary amount of power to keep up this speed for long. Of course, I'm not going to be racing around at, well, 25 kilometers per hour, if I don't have to. But for now, it would be nice to get close enough to the target, that aerial thing, so that the gun can at least be seen in action once. That's going to be the last bit of uh, adventure for this episode. Again, failsafe, do not fail me now. Or it's going to be really, really messy, and we're going to blow off the turret, or the, the fin. Con tower. Fortunately, these flyers are terribly slow. And he is sort of coming my way, I think. Yep. Not sure if the Sabo heads are going to be the most effective against this. Probably not. Because you're going to have to punch quite a few holes in that thing in order to make it go down. Now let's see if these things are detecting something already. Nothing yet. Oh, we don't have enough processing power again. Main CPU. Where's the main CPU? Oh, here you are. Um... Yep. Hmm. What do you mean you don't have enough processing power? You do. Oh. Really? You silly. I sent that thing out as a separate mainframe. You guys probably were shouting at the screen for a half hour, but my sonar missile, or my missile sonar buoy holder, was not actively connected to the mainframe. It was connected as a separate mainframe. So yeah, my sonar buoys were especially useless this whole time. Let's see, we're getting closer. We should be. At least I should hope so. We get each other in the same frame, at least. That's me. That's him. Nah, it's going to take too long. Alright, that's going to be something that happens in the next episode. For now, I would like your advice on how to improve upon that turret design. Both the way it looks, the way it fires, and the way that I have this atrocity set up below decks. Because yes, it works right now, but I think it can work a little bit better. So let me know what I need to do to improve that. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And let me know what your suggestions are. And I'll happily implement those in the next episode. See you soon for more From the Depths.